Is there something that can instantly stop a dog from reacting aggressive and trying to go after people with a push of a button? The answer is yes, and we're gonna be covering all of that in this video. This is a life-saving video with two cases that came in with extreme aggression, and I'm gonna walk you through and talk you through the scenarios to help you out at home to save your dog's life. So we have this Tibetan Mastiff coming in. If you don't know what Tibetan Mastiffs are, I will show you in this short clip. So, this guy comes in with this dog, traveled quite a ways to get here. He has a bite history. The dog is an intact male, eight month old Tibetan Mastiff with zero control. We have all the things going against us. The dog has a bite history. He is aggressive towards me. I can't even have a conversation with the owner. Uh, so we put the dog back into the car and we talked about what was going on. So fundamentally, there's a lot of things going on here. Every dog is a project, right? Some projects being bigger than others. This is a giant project. We have all of the things, right? We have an aggressive dog. We have an untrained, disobedient dog. We have an insecure dog and we have an eight month old giant, giant protective massive dogs. All these things are going against us. Number one thing is gonna be control, education, and making sure that we can holster this loaded gun. Now, when you have a dog that's actually aggressive and doesn't like people, uh, has malicious intent all the time, just really not a very friendly dog in general, they will be very consistent about going after anybody they don't no, this dog could care less. I handled him, I walked him around, he's fine. So that's good. Now, a couple things in this particular case, there's very, what I would call, environmental behavioral changes, which means literally any change in environment or a change in environment, the dog changes. So I'm with the dog, we're fine. I give the dog back to the owner, the owner sits down, I approach, we're not fine. Okay, that's a variable there, that's a trigger. Those are things that are triggering the dog to become aggressive. This dog has zero obedience. Sit. No. No. Sit. I told you. <laughs> Doesn't have any means to Sit. hold the dog accountable if they make a mistake. Now you gotta think guys, this is a well over 120 pound giant dog, right? And this guy loves this dog and this dog assumably is sweet within his own you know, circumstances and own environment. And with a dog like that, that's, that's all you could ask for. We're gonna work on some basic obedience. We're gonna start tuning things up. But at the end of the day, if this guy doesn't shut this behavior down and stop this aggressive behavior, we are in trouble. As I approach the dog, he aggressively lunges at me. Not a, not a scared, hey, I don't really know what to do. It is, if you don't leave, I'm gonna hurt you. And he's big and he just about drags this guy off the floor. And so what do we do under these circumstances? Of course, I want the dog's perception to change emotionally. I want the dog to think about the environment and the situation differently. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Sometimes so, with some dogs, that's not going to happen. That's never going to happen. This dog is never going to like me. He's never gonna like random people coming on the property. He's not gonna like the Amazon driver. He's not gonna like the neighbors. This dog is not a good pet. The circumstances are we euthanize the dog because the owner can't control him, or we try to really communicate with the dog that what they're doing is inappropriate, but how? I can't correct the dog because he's just gonna ride up the leash and try to attack me. So what do we do? What I ended up using with this dog is a vibrating collar. So I push a button and it goes like this. It does not hurt the dog at all. It doesn't have levels of one to 10. It has one level and it vibrates. Now that's what we're about to try in this video. And I want you to watch how this dog's behavior changes. And I wanna follow through with what happens after? What is the dog thinking? How is the dog thinking? Is this fair? Is this not fair? What are some things that you should never do correcting a dog like this? And so on and so forth. So let's just check this out really quick. So you do. No. So that's the pager. And you walked him earlier. He responds really nice to this e-collar. And that's just the pager, it's just the vibrate. You just wanna make sure that when you're doing it, you're, you're saying, uh, leave it, and then I'm using this because we want him to listen to you. Leave it. Yes, yep, 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 that's good. That's good, that's avoidance. He's either like, I don't think I can make a good decision, so I'm gonna avoid this guy because I can't help myself. I'm like a were werewolf or whatever. But also he could be like, this guy, um, is a guy that corrects me, so I'm gonna avoid him. So there's a lot of things happening here. That is really good. Woo! 
That is, that is breakthrough. So he's just like, I don't want to make a bad decision. I'm over this. And for a dog of that caliber and that breed to do that is really good. Now, one thing we can all agree on in the dog space, I think, is corrections cause stress. That's the point of correcting a dog, is to simply let them know that the behavior they're doing, we don't wanna see anymore, we want it out. We want that to be stressful. But again, it's not me, it's their behavior. So when we ask a dog to sit and we pay them, yes, good sit, boom, and they get a treat, that doesn't mean that the person walking by as we ask them to sit is the reason why they got paid. It's the specific behavior that they did in order to unlock or unload that reward from me as a handler. So the exact end of the spectrum, when the dog freaks out and tries to get aggressive, we're adding punishment, we're adding stress, we're adding everything we can to the dog to say, hey, we do not wanna see this ever again. So that's really the, the caveat here when we're talking about behavior. And I know you guys at home are just trying to figure out like, the, the right answers and to try to figure out what is right and what is wrong. You know, that's one thing that we hear a lot. Well, if you correct a dog, it's stressful. That's the point of a correction. Now, if we were working with a young six month old lab puppy and they were reacting kind of cute towards me, I wouldn't be doing any of this. Now that's the context. That's what I want to be clear about. Cause you might take a clip from this video and say like, oh, okay, I'm just going to use the vibrating collar when a dog does anything I don't like. That's not the point of this video and that's not what I do and I do not suggest that. Under the certain circumstances, especially with a dog like this, we have to go into intervention training. That dog is causing potential harm to themselves and to other people. We need to let them know very clearly, we do not wanna see this again. If you guys wanna win a one-on-one -on -one virtual session with me, all you have to do to be entered to win, like this video, turn on your notifications, and leave a comment in the comments below. We're gonna switch gears just a little bit. We're gonna talk about another case. So we have Loki, which is a German Shepherd with a rap sheet of bites. So we have an owner that uh, physically, again, really can't hang on to this dog, you know? And maybe in the past, he had, this dog's seven years old. So uh, as our bodies change and things change, sometimes our abilities change. And that's really what's happening with this dog is the dog could overpower the handler. This dog is the most relaxed, chill, down to earth, like do whatever you want type of dog I've seen all weekend. I saw him react a couple times to other dogs. And again, the, the, the owner can't physically really hang on to this dog. And the owner's relationship with this dog is something very special. You guys can just see in the video, um, they, they are with one another. And so again, hanging around this dog all weekend, he really didn't even lift up his head. He could care less about anything. But under certain circumstances, if somebody comes over and announced, if the dog gets out and the Amazon driver's out, all these things that we have to do to play zookeeper are the responsibility of the owner. But this is exactly the same situation as Teddy, the Tibetan Mastiff of, if something does happen in an emergency, the owners can't physically do anything. They just can't. So again, our options are, well, just, just put the dog down. It's easy for a lot of people out there to say that because it's not their dog and they're looking at it in their lens of like, this is a liability and it could be. But again, every dog could be a liability. This is another case where I use the vibrating collar to correct the dog for reacting and it immediately, boom, shuts off the behavior. That's the one. So just tell him to leave it. Leave it. That's the pager. Good. Leave it. Handler's out with the dog, the dog reacts, the handler almost loses footing, and the dog could take full advantage over the situation, which is dangerous for everybody. So I'm using the vibrate collar to say, Brr, no, you're not. Again, this collar is not corrective in a way that anybody else thinks it is, right? It doesn't cause the dog any external or internal pain at all. It's a vibrate like your cell phone. And it is proven many, many times across the world, no matter where I'm working, this collar that vibrates can certainly change the perception of the dog and how they think and how they should be acting. And sometimes they just go, oh, okay, well, I won't do that anymore. And it's done. It's that simple. And other times it's suppression where the dog's like, I'm going to come after you, but I won't because I don't want to get punished. And those are just, those are, those are behaviors that you can't change. That's a personality of a dog through genetics and through their environment and through we let, what we let them do and not do. And that's a different story. But again, this is another situation where the dog owner doesn't have any options left. Uh, we can't physically really control the dog. Nobody else is really willing to take the dog. We either euthanize the dog or we figure things out. And this collar has changed their life forever. And even the owner had told me it has saved his dog's life because for the first time, 
his dog starts to do something that we do not want him to do and we're able to push a button to deactivate it. Here is two dogs with two different owners who love each other fiercely. And they were really struggling with keeping their dog safe because if your dog bites somebody, it could be death for them. And that, I take that very seriously. Here's a tool that was used in modern technology to push a button for both of these men who really can't control their dog physically to communicate with their dogs. And unfortunately, in some places of the world, this is being banned and I'm not kidding you, being banned by people who have never used one in their life. Now to be fair, you could say, well, I'm never gonna use something that's gonna cause harm to a dog. And, and I would agree to that to some extent. But we also have to remember that when a dog is making a decision to physically go after and bite somebody, it's going to end their life. And I wanna cause as much stress as I can under that environment fairly to that dog so they don't do that again. And if I can do that, ethically, humanely, and fairly with a push of a button that signifies the same vibrate as the iPhone in your pocket and stops the behavior and it tracks. Anybody who disagrees with that has the right to, but we can't look at the facts of what the remote collar can do to dog owners who can't physically control their dogs outside of their means. It is absolutely, in my opinion, unethical and inhumane and disgusting to see Cities, countries, regions ban a tool that can save a dog's life or two dog's life like you saw Loki and Teddy in this video. It just comes down to education. I guarantee you anybody who does not like remote collars will look at this video or look at this and say, yeah, but look how stressed the dog is. And I want to really clarify that is the point of a correction. That's the objective of a correction. As it is, as a reward is to enjoyment, and I wanna do this again, and encouragement is punishment to stress and to discourage things. So just, we gotta keep it real. We have to keep it, you know, a kid does something wrong and we like, hey, no, you can't do that, and they cry. I'm like, well, man, you shouldn't have freaking smashed the light over your buddy's head. This is part of life, and it's really uh, getting to a point where uh, you know, you guys just need to know the truth and these are the truths and um, for the majority of you watching this video You can all probably nod your head and go. Yeah, that makes sense And hopefully it, it teaches and educates other people out there that are on the fence of like what they should do with their dog And they're getting pulled in different directions because of what the internet says and these are two clips not written not a blog not theory not on paper that changed their life forever. I hope it was helpful. Uh, we do it every single day and we plan on putting more of this out for the world to see. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to take my e-collar course to learn more or if you want to purchase the Tom Davis Dog Trade 280C, you can click the link below and purchase it even on Amazon. So thank you for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Let me know what you think in the comments and we'll do some more in the future. Bye.